Okay, watching this episode of Ruby, I already freaking knew what was going on. Right when Oscar and Ruby start awkwardly um, staring at each other, I could always hear it. I could always sense it. I could always smell it. I could already hear the horns going off. The freaking ship is coming in out of nowhere, man. The freaking Dodge Iceberg, and it's coming. Every time there's a new character introduced in the Ruby fandom, there's always a ship like like that. Right when Crow and um and Winter both showed up, they were shipped automatically. When um, Ruby met White, they were shipped. When Blake met Yang, they were shipped. And now when Blake also met Sun, they were shipped. And it seems like no matter what character comes in the show, they're always going to be shipped with someone or somewhere somehow. And people are going to take it seriously. And they're going to start taking it as in a way that, hey, this is what's going on. But no, it's, 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 let's just wait, people, okay? They just met. Before we start sailing off into the sunset, believing that this is going to be confirmed, let's give it some free time. It's already, there's already fan art and people making forums about it already. Jeez, like the episode just came out. So anyway, let's get into this episode. I'm gonna start off with Blake and Hermione. I already knew this meeting was gonna be a disaster, one way or another. Whether um they get news that Adam has taken over the White Fang or something. I didn't really expect Ilya to come out of nowhere and make the proclamation that she did. Because as we all know, um y you have to look at everyone's point of view. Sure, Blake is doing the right thing. However, the right thing doesn't always feel like the good thing. For instance, um, if you were a race that's been discriminated against forever, um, they don't care if you die, they, you're always seen as the lower class, and you know you're superior, why would you want to work beside people who've been nothing but bad to you? In a way, it's like X-Men in a way, you know, you have the mutants, you have the humans, even though mutants are more super superior. The humans treat them like trash, so you wonder why you wouldn't want to coexist with humans where you can roll over them. So in a way, I can see why they wanted to do that. At first, they were actually on for um, working with the humans. However, once when they heard that they had to go and um, protect Haven Academy, everyone stopped clapping. Meaning, they don't want to do it. Of course they don't want to do it. Why would you want to help out people who never helped you out before in your life? They just sit on the sidelines, laugh at you, or don't even care you in existence. So I can see why a lot of people, honest, were angry about this and didn't agree to it. Now let's get on the part with Oscar and Ruby and friends. As I'm back to saying, I'm not talking about the ships no more. But now, Oscar, Osbin is very, he's, a, he's ancient. In, in a way, we already knew what was up pretty much from the very first episode from the beginning of Volume 4. We knew that Oscar would reincarnate by going to different people's bodies and so on and so forth. However, what I didn't know is that the soul will merge. As in, right now, inside Oscar's body, there's two souls, Oscar's and Austin. But apparently, as time goes on, their souls will merge and become one. So all their memories and experience and feelings will become the same. So in a way, it's like an avatar. In a way. So yes, you can say Osman is the avatar. However, um, unlike the avatar who doesn't have all their memories, um, Osman does. But now going off to that, um, we're about to hit a training mark. There's like one or two months until Salem's ultimate plan to attack Haven Academy before it reopens up for a fall semester. So we're about to have ourselves a nice, good old anime tradition training mark. And I, one thing I love is I love training arcs. Training arcs are good because that's when you see your characters develop. They hit on personal issues. They also um, learn cool, sweet moves and all that stuff. A lot of stuff can happen in training arcs. Some people like tournament arcs. I love training arcs. But that's when you get to know a lot more about the character in a very nice, slow-paced space. And plus you can see the amazing, cool, swift moves that they'll come up with throughout time. So, as we all said, they point out the fault so far only with um, John and Ruby. They don't really say much about Nora and Ren, but they probably have some things they need to work on. But the main thing that Austin was focused on was Ruby and John. As we all know, John is improving. 
he's a good um, strategy master. Plus, he's okay with sword now. However, we still don't know John's semblance. And so far, what we know is that it's very strong. He can um, counterattack, and he heals very fast. So he has a lot of it, but we still don't know what exactly what it is. Then next, as we've seen from the Yang trailer of Volume Five, and of course throughout the whole entire show of Ruby, Ruby can't fight without Crimson Rose. It's been proven. She, without Crimson Rose, she's a wimp. She can't do anything. So then yet again, she does her speed power to produce like very powerful little twisters, but it's still not enough. So now I believe she learns the cool moves close to combat. That will be freaking amazing. I am really excited about that. Seeing Ruby learning some actual close quarters combat without Crimson Rose. Is, Lord knows she needs it. Because she is very powerful with Crimson Rose. But however, she has nothing without it. So yes, her doing some power and also probably working on her semblance more. Working on what can she probably do. Since she her semblance is probably is speed, she will probably be able to enhance, use the enhanced speed for attacks, and that would be pretty cool, you know? She's throwing out some punches and kicks, and they're going really fast, because she's fast herself. Unless her similar just works only with running, I don't know. So then finally we get with Weiss. We get to see Fidel, Bela, Bela in this episode. And a lot of people believe she is the Spring Maiden, and she probably is the Spring Maiden. And of course, Weiss is captured. Now, there are two things that I got out of this. One, you never brag about someone you're in a hostage situation. If it's only made yourself, one, put yourself in more danger, or two, people don't laugh at you. And exactly what Weiss did. She bragged about her older sister, saying how she'll find her and she'll stop them if there's something they can do about it. But little did she know that um, Alice cut off all borders to outside, so of course she's not in this troll. So that was pretty dumb on her end. You never brag about people in a hostage situation. You might put your situation into an even worse predicament than it already is. Then, of course, finally there is when she has her summon. So even without her um, sword, she can still summon her creatures. So of course she will use a creature to break out and it'll be easy as that. And so in a way, capturing her really little to no sense. Ellen's Raven's still there, and she knocks her out or something. But yeah, um, so they have one to two months to get prepared before Salem attacks Haven Academy and before it falls semester, and ironically, it is fall. So anyways, what do you feel about the episode? What do you feel about the shipping of Oscar and Ruby? What do you feel about Weiss and her situation? Will Weiss be able to make it out, or will she still be captured, or Raven will come up and stop her plan? That's all I got for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. I'll be much obliged. This is Nerf Combat Man. Sign off.